Hello everyone and welcome to Technology Tuesday with Adventures in iSTEM. Today I'm going to take you through the steps on how to get your students signed up for Schoology and show you the student view. I always sign up twice, once as a teacher and a second time as a student using different emails so that I can see what the students see and double check to make sure everything is working properly. So let's get started. So the, you're going to go to sign up and you're going to have your students choose student and here's where they're going to need an access code. Now if they've already signed up for Schoology before you'll just have them log in but for the first time you will need to have them do the access code so I created a practice course and here's the access code for my practice course that I did And here they're going to put in their first name, last name, email, and password. Now for students, you don't want them using too many emails and passwords. So my students have a Google account set up for them from the district. I make them use the same Google account and password. That way if there's any problems, I can get in and help them out. And that way they're only memorizing one Google name and one password. They will ask for their birth date, and that's because Schoology, although it is a safe harbor website, which means that it is safe for K-12 students to use, uh, does require students under the age of 13 to have parent permission. Now for me, I teach mostly, mostly 8th graders, and that's not a problem. But for my 7th grade class, I do have some that are under the age of 13. And it's very simple to have them send home, get a parent permission, sign it, and then you just simply fax um, Schoology over that information and you can put it as, as one thing and it's, it's no big deal, it's, it's no problem. Um, it's just Schoology making sure that parents who have um, students who are under the age of 13 are aware that their child is using the internet. It's just a backup for them. But again, this is a safe harbor website so you do not have to have any worries about um, students doing things or being on some place they don't need to be. So they're going to go ahead and sign up. And once they signed up, it'll take them through. They can do the tours like you did, and then it will have their information just like you see here for me. Now I will take you. It does take an average of about 15 minutes to get all your students signed up. Um, some will have problems with their password uh, and different things. So you will want to have maybe some other little side activity like a review sheet or vocabulary words for them to work on so that those who do sign up have something to work on while you're helping out those that are having trouble with technology. Um, I do try and um, pair my students up with someone who is used to computers but if you have younger students maybe they're all not used to computers so do know that it does take a um, a while for um, younger students to sign up and even for like I said my eighth grade class it took me about 15 minutes to get everyone on um, following the same page just for a heads up on that. So the students come in and um, notice they have again the information that I've given them. So for me I make sure they have an important information links. Um, this is where they're gonna find uh, their information on, um, for me I have a sci science lab report template that they can use um, for all their science lab reports. Um, I give them a link to their Edpuzzle and Google Classroom sites so that way it's easier to copy and paste for anything else um, which makes it much easier later on. Um, my students are on Student Portal for Aries so they can check their grades there. They have their Edpuzzle link, a Google Drive link, and a class Google Classroom link. Um, I am heavy into trying to go as much paperless as possible. We do keep an interactive notebook for the basic information and for reviews, but for lab reports um, and discussions, uh, we do use the online paperless format. If they want to go back, they, again, they just hit their um, core class, so mine's the practice again. They have their quarter one information. Uh, here is where I keep their flipped lessons homework, scientific method homework, batter, review, practice, and so on. So this is how you get your students onto Schoology. It's very simple. Um, you can have fun the first time, few minutes of doing it. They can come over here to their name. This is where you also have your name. I always have my students use their first name and last name. And you can have them in the very beginning. Um, 
add a picture. Now I do tell my students they need to use school appropriate. Uh, they can choose an avatar here or they can attach their own picture and they'll usually do that, do that at home. But um, make sure it's school appropriate. Students, you know, as a middle school student, they understand what school appropriate means. Um, so I do dock them if they don't choose them at school appropriate. Um, for lower grades, anything under middle school, you might have to explain to them what would be appropriate, what not would not be, and remind them that um, even though this is a safe harbor school, whatever they post on there, uh, you know, it is potential that anyone can see this. So ask, you know, keep in mind that, you know, I always tell them as for middle school, if you were the dean of a college or the um, head of a college and you were choosing students to come to your college, would you choose them based on their picture, based on their post? Would that be a would you want them at your school? Would they be a potential candidate? And that kind of helps them because sometimes I would say, you know, your grandmother, um, and, and nowadays that doesn't work as well. So I ask them, you know, a potential candidate. Now, once they set up the profile, you can talk to them about um, if they need to message you for anything, they can come up here to the little um, mail envelope and they can uh, message you and add messages for that, which is nice. Um, if you put them into groups, they can go to their groups and join their group with the um, code that you've given them. So again, this is just nice little ways to, um, to get their um, their information. And whether I'm using Edpuzzle or Google Classroom, for me, I always make them come here first, and then their assignment might say go to Edpuzzle or go to Google Classroom but they start here so that way all their information is in one spot and that just makes it easier for me but that's that's my tutorial um, let me know what you think don't forget to subscribe to adventures in istem um, dot com and check out my other information on using technology in your classroom